Doctor Abed Amina, this is where you start, so you go use your head camera. So you possess. Amina, they post you see, so you possess and all know. Thank God who go deliver you, Doctor. <laughs> The pastor don't know when he provoke common side. He's possessed and I can deliver him. There is this man in Nigeria from Uyo, Uyo, Nigeria. Those of you that know Uyo, Nigeria, that is talking nonsense. Demons, demons enter that man. Demons enter that man, and that man is talking nonsense. Manip you know, manipulating so many people, and they are clapping, clapping for him. If I'm to say that man is no longer in faith, that man from Uyo, Uyo, Nigeria, is no longer in faith. That man has persuaded. Another spirit has taken over him. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Do you know one thing that happened? Do you know what happened? I had him one day on the social media. He was so aggressive to the congregation. What I'm saying is true. I have not somebody told me. He was so aggressive to his congregation and he was saying, is it because I preach against tithes and none of you is bringing money in the church again, even money to buy diesel for the generator, we don't have money to pay for television, we don't have he was so furious hey, why are you complaining? why are you complaining? use your hair to pay for the bills of the church, if the members did not pay their tithes and bring offering for the work of God, use your shoe, use your shoe to run the church men and brethren, how can we run the church if you did not bring your tithes and offering how can we put this in? How can we service the church? When everybody, you know, stop paying his or her tithes and offering and seed to the, to, for, for the work of God, for the church of God to move forward, how can we run God's own business? When you abandon God's business, how do you expect the glory of God and the favor of God to come upon your own businesses? Sometimes you see that man preaching. Look at this person, he's a multi billionaire. Look at that person, he's a multi billionaire. Look at the other one, he's a multi billionaire. They are not born again. Why are you comparing unbelievers, people in the dark world, with the people in the, in the kingdom of God? They are prospering in their own way. The Bible says that we should not admire them. The Bible says we should not do what? Admire them. We should not admire or envy them. The success of the wicked. The success acquired from the darkness. Praise the living God. So he's comparing. So some person is a billionaire. So some person is a billionaire. But they are not Christians. What, 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 what are you pursuing? The devil has entered that man in Uyo, Uyo Nigeria. Acquire bomb. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? I'm saying it loud and clear so that he can hear it. He can hear it. The devil has entered a man. Do you know one of the things I had recently? He said that if you pray sincerely, you pray sincerely with all your heart in the mosque, even though you are not a Christian, God will answer you. You pray in the shrine. You pray in the shrine with all your heart. God will answer you. That man need deliverance. Amen. That man in New York need what? Deliverance. He need deliverance. Good people should bring him here. Let me conduct deliverance. Amen. And remove that demon in his head. Amen. When I stopped preaching the other gospel in this church, and most of you were here. And I began to preach Christ and I began to say, tithing is not New Testament, all of that. You know, everyone that was in this church stopped paying tithes and naturally stopped giving. Yeah, all of you here. You stopped giving. You started dropping flimsy change. Change from Kekena Pep. You just drop it. So now, I'm not putting it on you. But at the same time, I'm rebuking you. 
And the rebuke is for those who are still dropping change money because there's no tithe. So it means in the first place, you were never given to God. You were given to yourself. Because the reason why you were given is so that devourers will not come. So it was for self-preservation. It was not because you loved God. Because if it was God you were giving to and you discover that there's no problem that will happen, you will still be giving. But you gave because you were in fear. If you don't tight, it will be tight. If you don't tight, Satan will come. Devourers will come. So because of that, you were religiously bringing tight. Religiously. As soon as your salary comes, ah, 10%, don't touch it, don't touch it. I don't want trouble. So you were faithful. When I now say no, trouble will not come. God is not a monster. He's not New Testament, all that. Else. Okay, no problem. So now we can give God anyhow we like. So he started dropping because you, you were never a generous person, number one. Number two, you were never in love with the purpose of God. You are only in love with your selfishness. And if you are still giving like that, I put it to your face straight, not behind you. You are a selfish person. Because it means you have not understood the riches of God's grace. Now, anyways, back to the story. So, all the finances stopped and we're just having little, little monies, barely enough to buy half of the diesel to run our generator for services. So we couldn't pay for Kingdom Life Network anymore. Even our staff salaries, we couldn't pay. So we started thinking, should we drop all the staff? But if we drop all the staff, ministry will not go on. So mama and I started calculating, what do we do? And things were really getting really tight and really bad and really tough. But we never told you, we just come to church, smile, teach you the word of God, go home and just pray and just walk with God in our experience. So mama said to me, honey, we are not impressing anybody. At this level, we have gone past impressing people. Let's shut down the TV station. Let's shut it down. If God makes money available in the future, we go back. We are not in competition. I said, correct. We shut down television. We came to the office. Mama said, well, let's look around. If there's any stuff that we can do without, we can send them packing. Any stuff that can do two, three things, can sack the other two and keep the work. So we started doing all of that. We started downsizing everything. Downsizing everything. No vacation. We decided we will not go on vacation. We will just stay in New York and be happy in our house. Things were really bad. A lot of people started saying, Dr. Damina, can't you see God punishing? Can't you see? He now is preaching heresy. He can't even pay television. He can't do anything. See? His ministry is closed. And they were rejoicing and celebrating. And I was walking with God in our experience. Step by step impressing nobody not in competition with anybody just walking with god and we are not angry we are happy we come to church teach you the word of god bless you study 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 then we began to teach generosity and a number of you began to wake up to your responsibility and began to give and god began to steer up people all over the world who are feeding from this church and benefiting from this ministry to start intentionally supporting us and then we were in America to preach. Two years after Kingdom Life Network is down, they're insulting me everywhere. I even called one of my spiritual sons, I remember. One of those Januarys, as the new year was starting, I called him and I said, let's talk. I don't like this message you're preaching. I taught you and I want to correct it because that's not the gospel. After I finished talking with him in the hotel room for a while, he looked me into the face, my own spiritual son. He said, Papa, this new thing you're preaching, I will not preach it till I Till I see how it is working for you. Can't you see your TV station is down? Can't you see all your things are packing up? Then you want me to join you? He told me to my face. And I looked at him. And I said, well, if you're waiting to see how this message would benefit me, you may never see it. Because my priorities have changed. For you, it's about cars, houses, clothes, and all of that. For me, it's about souls and the kingdom. So me and you have no alignment. So if you're waiting to see me displaying cars and displaying all of that, I won't do it. That would, wouldn't mean that it is not working for me. So then, every time I come to this pulpit, if you all remember, Kingdom Life Network was off. I will say, we want to welcome every one of you watching this service by way of Kingdom Life. I never stopped saying that. I kept saying that. I was working with God in our experience. Because I knew it was going to come back. 
So we got to America with Mama. And then one of the ladies who just got saved and caught the fire of what we were preaching met us in America. She came with her family, greeted us, celebrated what God has done. Her life has changed and everything. Then she looked at me and said, Dr. Damina, God brought me to help you pay the bills. So I said, the first bill is television. She said, I will pay for the next one year. How much is it? I gave her the bill. She wrote the check and gave me right there. And we paid for KLN one year ahead. And the television station is on. We walk with God in our experience. Now, KLN is not only back. It's one year and a half now. We are on several radio stations every day. Millions every month. Now, our staff are being paid without stress. Everything is back. But now, not after the former order, but after a new order. Because we just walk with God in our experience. Now, all those guys that were laughing at me, their own TV stations are down. One of them said to me, I can't even pay school fees. I can't even pay school fees, Papa. Times are tough. So I closed it down. The same person who told me, I will not preach it till I see how it is benefiting you. Can't you see your TV station is down? His phone has been down now for one year and a half. And his problem is even to pay school fees. Even with the wayo wayo gospel is preaching. Even with the wayo wayo tight, intimidating people using prophecy, wayo prophecy to collect money. He cannot even pay school fees refuse to quit say i am long suffering say it again i am long suffering kenneth Hagin said when you're ready to wait forever you don't wait for too long some of you are not patient little thing you don't begin the change story we went through rough financial times for close to four five years and you didn't hear anything from our mouth when you didn't hear when you didn't hear when i will come to this pulpit and teach as if the whole money in the world is in my house when and I didn't do fundraising. I didn't do fundraising. The offering you gave, we took it, gave thanks, applied it where it could be applied. The monies people gave to me, I put it in. Without you knowing, all my money, all my money, even till now, even till now, even till now. Some of you know we're on radio, seven hours, I mean 11 hours every day. I don't want to say something. You think it's the offerings here that are paying for radio broadcast? Ask the finance people, how much is the offerings? Sometimes those offerings are not up to 400,000 in a whole service times four. That's 1.2. It doesn't pay for one radio station because one radio station is 1.3 million. One. Let me put it to you. And it's not to make you feel bad though. It is to be a witness with your spirit that I'm saying what I'm saying. It's not about, it's not about making you feel bad. What will I gain from you feeling bad? Nothing. It's to put it to you. So you wake up. We have work. I have literally personally paid for the radio stations this one and a half years.